Okay, so we should be showing up live any second. Um, okay, so I'm going to just wait till we get the live button that comes on. Oh, there we go. Yes. Let me turn this off. I was gonna say, oh, we've already got an eyeball, but that's you. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so awesome. Um, okay, so I'm going to start off with uh, with welcoming everybody to Monday Whispers chat. So bridging the gap wellness is all about being able to create a holistic um, life and helping people find balance. And so each week during Monday Whispers chat is I, um, I, I have I Oh my goodness, I'm doing this again. Um, it's been a very long, it was a great weekend, but a very long weekend. We just hosted a um, Women Inspiring Women retreat. So my mouth is like all day has been like tongue tied. Um, <laughs> so every week we actually feature an amazing woman. And this week we are, and I'm going to, I'm hoping to pronounce her name properly. So Kaisha? Kai, Kai, yes. <laughs> Kaisha. She even corrected me just before we come on live and I still got it wrong. Um, so Kaisha is, uh, is here to, uh, to join us today. So I'll give you, um, so Kaisha is a serial entrepreneur, founder of Wealthy Woman Elite Consulting and Business Bestie, a mentor to the millennial and um, entrepreneurial woman and teens from Minnesota down to Texas. She's yeah. born in um, East St. Louis. Kaisha is a firm believer that women, that as women, when you look good, you feel good. And when you feel good, you can take on the world. She calls herself a former statistic. She was a teen mom of three kids, under three years old by the age of 22 and domestic abuse warrior. Kiesha knows that your story is only a stepping stone to your success. She values the power of transparency, although she will not hold um, although she will not hold back her truth to make you comfortable in your lies. In fact, she insists that you stop caring about what a hater got to say about you and you live your best life unapolog unapologetically. She creates a powerful movement to change the way women of color are perceived in the household of one goddess at a time. She truly believes that no matter what you have been going through or where you've been going through, that we can keep going. So, um, so welcome, Kiesha. So I am so excited to have you here. Thank you. Thank so, you. I'm excited um, to be here. So this is, um, so for those of you who are catching the replay, hashtag replay, let us know that you're here. Um, Kiesha has just shared it onto her page. So that is, uh, so that's great. Um, so, but if you guys have any questions, hop on and we've got three eyeballs. I know one of the eyeballs is Kiesha. We actually figured that out because she is the first person that I've actually had that I've interviewed that actually is able to turn it on while we're in. <laughs> I'm like a professional at this live, y'all. Like, seriously, I do this every week. So I am very aware of what I'm doing when it comes to this. <laughs> so that is awesome. And so in the, um, so on the Zoom, so again, another new thing that I actually have going on today is that on the, uh, the uh, this is the first time I've opened up the webinar to be able to have guests jo join us on the webinar. So we have both um, the Facebook Live and the webinar. And so Tammy is, um, is joining us. So hello, Tammy. So thanks for joining us. And yeah. uh, I'm super, super excited for this. Um, and I'm super pumped because like I said, I just finished hosting a women inspiring women retreat this weekend where we had 11 speakers, 11 female speakers sharing their way of being able to balance and how they actually bring what all the, the different tools that they use in their life to be able to create balance. So super, super excited to be doing this. Yeah. Um, so so tell me a little bit about what are some of the things that you do to help create change with some of the women that you work with? So some of the things I've been doing in the past, um, which is crazy, I just rebranded my entire everything recently. <laughs> but what I've been doing in the past is I love, I'm first of all, I'm an introvert. And I love to be by myself and to read. I love, I'm a big like, podcast junkie and um, documentary freak. Like I love all those things, but I love to talk about 
the power of our tongue and how our words possess so many things that people are unaware of, you know? So often we say things jokingly like, oh my gosh, you're, you're too funny, I'm dead or whatever. You know, you're speaking life when you yeah. use your tongue. And um, even when you look at like, if you're when you just look at the Bible, you know, you say the life and death holds in your mouth. It's the power of your tongue and you have the power to speak things into existence. So I love manifestation and the moon and all that stuff. Like I'm really big at all that stuff, but um, I really enjoy talking to people about their future. I love hearing other people's backgrounds and their stories and where they have been in their life and where they plan to go and how they plan to get there. So I'm all about action. I love, like I said, I talk to people every week on Facebook um, in my own series. And I, I love to get how they got to where they are in their business currently. So I love to hear, you know, what they've been through, um, you know, with their kids or their spouse or whatever it is they have overcome in their past to put that resilience up and be like, you know what? I did not deserve what I went through. I may have been handed the deck of cards or the hand of cards I did not expect to have in my life, but that doesn't define me. And because of that, I'm going to overcome it and do something that exceeds everyone's expectations, not just my own. Um, so I love speaking to kids in high schools, um, going to the middle schools and talking to girls because I too was you know, a teen mom and I know the struggle of, of not really having someone to talk to and trust. Um, and then also doing, I love boot camps. So I love to challenge people to see, be like, you know what? You said you want to do it. Let's make it happen. If you can't follow me right here, then I don't know what you're going to do with your life, but let's just try, you know? So that's what I have been doing. I actually have a new program coming out, um, in the, the next month called, <laughs> um, resign to riches. And that's going to help women to transition from the nine to five into their own service-based business full time. So what did you call it? Uh, resign to riches. Resign to, oh, lovely. That's a beautiful title. I love that. Thank you. So um, hello, Danielle. So Danielle actually was the uh, the co-host of the uh, conference that um, I was in, so or that I was uh, hosting. So she just she's just joined us live, and uh, so we have a couple of other people that have joined. Well, and I don't have to tell you that because you can see them. This I is can so see cool. everybody on right now. Thank you, Olivia. <laughs> Thank you, Deborah. Hey, thanks for coming on. <laughs> and, uh, and Sue has said hello. And so this is this is really different for me to be able to not have to say, oh, by the way, somebody just jumped on. <laughs> <laughs> this is fabulous. <laughs> so that, like I said, that's a little bit of a learning curve for me. Um, so the um so one of the things that you were saying is that you um, help them, you help push them along. So what do you mean by that? Like, how do you help them? Um, like, how do you push them without that, uh, that, that fear? How, how do you push them through that fear? Uh, fear is, is good. You know, I feel like on the other side of fear is, is success. So I, there's nothing that's going to happen from you being stagnant in your situation. You know, when we are... I was, it's funny, I talked to a friend like 10 minutes before I got on the call with you. Um, I've moved from Minnesota to Texas. Me and my three kids, I drove with $120 in my pocket, not knowing what was going to come ahead of me, but I knew I had to do it to be a better me. I didn't know if I was going to even make it all the way there, but I wasn't going to be stuck in a place of I knew I wasn't, wouldn't succeed you know, mm -hmm. and even though I was scared and I didn't know, you know, what tomorrow may bring, I knew that I had to get over that in order for me to become successful, in order for me to see, to see something new, you know, or meet new people to bring me where I needed to be in my career, in my life, and for my kids' lives. Um, so I, most time I can relate to people by telling my own story and being up to speak my own truth. Yep. And then I'm like, seeing that and hearing like, oh, okay, I've been through that as well, or I can understand that. And, and and seeing that I've overcome it, that pushes them enough to at least take that chance on themselves. So like, you know what, if she can do it by herself with no one's help, I can do it. Like there's no excuse at this point. Yeah. So how long have you been operating your business? Like how long have you been doing this? So I've been a, I call it a success coach for almost two years now. Um, I've been, I would say coaching forever. I'm the oldest of four girls. and. 
Um, my very first entrepreneur or feel of entrepreneurship happened when I was 16. I would go to school. I will go to work. I worked at Camp Snoopy in the Mall of America. And then when I get home, I will braid hair out of my room. So me braiding hair and getting that cash in hand, like that instant gratification, I was automatically hooked. Like, okay, I can wait two weeks, get this little paycheck, or I can come home and braid hair in my room and get money like right away, you know? <laughs> so ever since then, I'm like, okay, I know there's a hustle for us all to get. I can have this, this um, you know, extra means of income and this guaranteed, you know, paycheck that I can get, you know, and not have to worry about getting money from other people. But at the same time, why not have both? So that's what I, that's what I've done. I was able to um, quit my job last year and work full time to entrepreneurship and entrepreneurship. And then I end up having to go back. Um, so I didn't plan it correctly. So it's, it's ironic that I had to go back and then tell all my followers, like, you know what? I love doing what I love to do with you guys. And, you know, it's all good. But guess what? I had to go back to work because I wasn't making enough. And then being able to, to fast forward and be like, you know what? I went back to work. But guess what? I fired my boss because I was able to make the money that I knew I could make in my side hustle and make it full time. And this is the exact step that I took now I'm going to help you do the same, which brought on the new program. Cool. That is so exciting. So, mm -hmm. so now you're not working anything else other than just your business. This is, I actually put in my notice last week. Yay. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. So, this is like, this is I, like, I'm still floating and su still super pumped. I'm still um, living on very little sleep on um to do with this this conference we had 37 um women that were uh 33 women that were actually that um that showed up but we had 37 women that were supposed to be coming and um and for our little conference um up in uh, in northern ontario so like we're way up um we're way up north so like this is really really cool that we were able to do this and so your story just lines up perfectly with the stories of it wasn't an entrepreneur um, um, work uh, conference it was about women inspiring women to be able to help them create balance and in their lives some were entrepreneurial others were not and so it's just really exciting to be able to see how um, this just kind of lines up and folds in together um, as to how that that happens like the universe has its own plan right so um, <laughs> the truth, yes. <laughs> like we have no clue who's what's going to happen or what's uh, like how it's all going to unfold and so that is just uh, it's just really neat so like last week I interviewed somebody who um, was um, was she was actually hosting her own um hey Lacey um somebody that was actually hosting her own uh women inspiring women weekend and so um it was amazing so that's what it was and then the week before just as we were actually closing off registrations I interviewed it just happened that when she picked the date um she picked the date of it she was the last um woman to be um interviewed that was actually coming to the conference. And so like oh, wow. everything kind of, and then today, here you are talking about like, let's get it on. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so this is amazing. And like I said, I love how, and I always forget, like, even though I know, I know, and it's, it's something that you already know, but when it happens, you're like, oh, it happened again. <laughs> Right. That's part of being like aligned, you know, when you're aligned with your yeah. higher self and with the universe, the universe makes it happen for you. Yeah. So um, what are some of the things like what are some of the tips that you're able to give um, to some of the women that are watching that are going like, I don't know, I really want to be able to like step out of and not have to do this work. And I don't want to have to do this job. And I want to be able to go out and do like, I'd love to be able to do the side hustle that you're talking about. But yeah. it's like, oh, like, how do I do that? So like, what are some of the tips that you can actually give them? Yeah, I first thing I always tell people is like, get out, get out of their own way. You know, it's like you're you're in you're not 
bothering anybody else. You're not, no one cares what you are really doing with your life. Like people may have those, those judging time and talk about, you know, oh, you should have did this, you should have done that. But if they are not where you want to be in their lives, their opinion doesn't matter, you know? So overcome that self-doubt. Um, tell yourself something, tell yourself something differently in the morning. When, when I wake up in the morning, the first thing I say to myself out loud is today is going to be a good day. Like, I don't think about anything else. It's, it's so second nature to me now that I don't think about it. It just comes. So yeah. claiming that first thing in the morning, today is going to be a good day. And no matter who pisses you off, like really going with it, you know, <laughs> just flowing with it. So, um, and limiting your interaction with people who are of low vibration. If they don't serve you or your purpose, then you need to get rid of them. I don't care if they're a relative or a friend you've known since fourth grade. If you want to elevate yourself, you first elevate the people who are around you, you know, because yeah. you're going to, they're going to rip up on you whether you want them to or not. If it's full of gossip every day, you're going to be, you know, consumed with gossip and overwhelmed. Your brain's going to be cloudy and you don't want that because when you realize that you really deserve better, you really desire better then you're going to be tested, you know, yeah. and until you're able to overcome those tests, things will repeat itself. So number one, definitely will be to overcome your self-doubt. Um, number two will be definitely getting clear on what you want to do. People tend to look at entrepreneurs and think, oh, okay, they're doing this. It looks easy. I'm going to go do the same thing. Right. <laughs> And then they jump in and they don't know what is going on because they're all over their place. They want to serve everybody. And it, that was my problem when I first started in my coaching career is that I'm like, okay, I'm a, I'm a business coach. I'm going to serve whoever wants to start a business. I made zero dollars my first year, the entire year, <laughs> zero dollars. <laughs> I, I held webinars. I held challenges. I did it. So many free things trying to have, you know, lead magnets and do what the big dogs were doing that I, no one, it was like crickets every, after every lunch, no one came. But until I realized, hey, let me narrow this down a little bit more and serve a specific audience, know exactly what I want to bring to their table and what exactly I want to provide them with at, as an end result, it's when I'm making my first few dollars. I had my first successful launch and I was like, oh my gosh, now I know the secret sauce to make it happen. <laughs> you know, like I have the sauce now. So um, definitely becoming clear on who you want to serve, what exactly you want to do and not following the trend of anybody else, you know, staying in your own lane always. And I, like I said, I'm a, I'm a podcast junkie, but sometimes when I'm launching, that has to come off. I don't want anybody else influencing me on what I should be doing in my business. It has to be that own connection with me and God. I have to be able to sit still and like really listen to myself and my heart and know exactly where, where I should go. Um, third is that when you do get clear on what you want to do is not to put out whatever you want to put out, but ask your audience what they need. People think that we're, we're going to do this little, you know, look here and there like, oh, okay, people need this, people need that. And it's like, okay, wait a minute. Who's actually following you? What do they actually need? Because I put out, you know, narrowing down your niche, free workbooks. I am probably got three downloads off of that. <laughs> you know, like <laughs> random downloads, but it wasn't serving anybody. No yeah. one asked for that. So how am I going to create something that no one even wants in the first place? And then um, definitely be looked at as the expert. Once you are overcoming your self-doubt, getting clear on what you want to do um, and all of that, you're going to become, look at as an expert and know your worth, you know? So definitely hold yourself high and know exactly what you bring to the table, what you have to offer and just go for it. And that, that last one is probably one of the hardest, right? So that last one is probably one of the hardest that we need to be able to do, to be able to step into um, who it is that we want to be because we've got that self-doubt that just kind of keeps up and creeps in and, and takes over. And so it's just really important for us to be able to like stand true to who we are. And somebody just uh, hit a hit a heart for us. Yay. 
<laughs> somebody like that um because it's true it, it's it's so true that we always and like you said stay in your own lane so one of the things that like you said like in the morning like that's one of the things that you do you connect with with um with god and that's how you are able to get started in the morning and i pull out my journal and i start journaling any thoughts or ideas or i'll pull out my um, my, if I stay in bed, then I'll pull my phone out and I'll actually type in some notes. So whether it's my emails or some ideas or whatever it is, and I just, whatever download that I get that morning is, I may not do anything with it now, but I generally come back to it at some point. It's like, Oh, I remember I had an idea and I go back to that thought or I got, go back to that. And it's like, Oh, okay. That's where I want to be able to do that. And again, before bed, that's one of the things that I actually do is that I often bring my phone in to the tub and, um, and I'll, uh, so I'll have some meditation music, but that's when I'm actually, um, kind of finishing up some of the thoughts and ideas that have actually come through my head through the day. But my first initial download that I refer to as my download is that starting with nothing else, but those ideas and making sure that I'm not, cons like you said, shutting off those podcasts, shutting off those everything else. So that I'm not consumed with everybody else's thoughts and ideas because we get steered off to another direction. We stop going and doing other things. And, um, and we had somebody a few weeks back that actually talked about like, um, stepping forward before you're ready. Right. So if you don't take that step forward, you're not going to get there. And it's just really important for us to be able to do that. And we had a couple of other people that talked about that as well. Hey, Lori, um, that talked about that this, this, um, as well during the, the, um, the conference is that, and the messages were always the same. It's like, connect with your higher spirit whatever that higher spirit looks like for you is and in this case today we're talking about um business but it's not even just about business it's about being able to empower ourselves that we have that that divine wisdom within us and we have that connection to be able to give us that wisdom for us to be able to move forward and do the things that we need to be doing and um so one of the other ladies that uh, did a presentation you were talking about the the high and low vibrations and she did the muscle testing and uh, one of the things that um that she did she did an experiment she had three volunteers that came up and so she had one of the volunteers um segregated off to the side and and said okay you're just going to go over here and she actually went and spoke to the other two people and said you guys are going to have a conversation and when she approaches you guys there's no conversation to be had you do not you don't even engage with her you don't have anything but when they all first started they all had they were all very strongly grounded and they were all um, connected so when she did the muscle testing they were all very strong. This lady comes over and she does, they start ignoring her. They pay no attention to her. And um, not only did her vibration, and this is the part that I thought was really interesting because I never knew that. Hey, Penny, is that when, um, like I knew that she, her vibration would be low, but the other two, their vibrations were low as well because of that energy that they were expending. Yeah. And so it's just so cool to be able to see that, that interaction. Cause like I said, I knew for sure the one person who was segregated, that her vibration would definitely be low and it was really difficult. And, um, because she was trying to engage and, and they weren't allowing her to engage at all. And, uh, and, but it, it, but it affected all three of their vibrations. So when you talk about that, right. So like get rid of those people who are keeping you in that low vibration. And so like, that's like, it's an amazing um, yeah. and again, that's that in sync conversation, right? So anybody yeah. who's watching today that, uh, that was at the conference is going to go, Oh, I remember that. Oh yeah. They did talk about that. And like I said, we had 11 speakers and the messages were all the same about that empowering and taking those things, those steps before you're ready. And who are you connecting with and who are you not connecting with? And, um, and really important for you to be able to trust those instincts that you actually have right so that intuition absolutely look the the law of the universe is real like there are universal laws and one of them is you know first of all everything is about how it holds vibration like anything alive or still holds vibration and being mindful of that you're going to change the way you do so many things like the way you interact, the what you watch on TV, things that you intake on a day-to-day -day basis, conversations that you have, you're going to want to change that because you're going to realize that this is going to affect me some way or some shape or form. 
you know, and knowing that, you know, um, whatever we put out comes back and karma is real and all of that. Like just knowing that is so true. And, um, and Penny is one of the ladies who, like I said, (laughs) some of the ladies who were actually were at the conference and Penny was, um, was at the conference. And like she said, it was that it, that's amazing to be able to see that energy. Right. So that's that energy shift that, uh, that you were talking about. So, um, what are some of the other things that, um, that you see with some of the women in terms of, um, disempower that they do that disempower them themselves? So I am really good at calling out BS. <laughs> I am really good at calling out excuses. So if I'm on a call with you or we're on a Zoom call, say you want to, you really want to start up this boutique, right? But you don't have the funding for it. An online boutique, you want to sell the certain coats or, or shoes or whatever. And your excuse is, oh, well, I don't have the funding or I don't have, um, the proper platform or whatever excuse you can throw out because they're all excuses. And I give you a solution. Like, okay, you don't have the funding for it. What funding are you waiting for? And they say, oh, I'm waiting for my job to give me this or I have to save up for it or it's going to be this amount of time. It's like, well, why don't you try drop shipping or why don't you do pre-orders? And, you know, I give you solutions to where you're able to actually monetize the product before you actually have it. And you're still throwing out excuses. And it's like, no, at this point, though, everything you're telling yourself, you're telling me are lies. So what are you going to do to fix this? And when they realize that they are telling themselves lies, they have that aha moment of, oh, you know what? You're right. Let's fix this real quick because I am full of BS right now. And let me just correct it so I can actually make movement. And once they're able to actually take a couple steps forward, then they're able to process like, look, I can actually do this. And I can not only do it, but I can succeed at doing it. And this actually does work. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it's incredible as to how to be able to make that move forward, right? So um, it's, uh, but that fear holds us back, right? And when they throw in those excuses, and like you said, they're all excuses, it doesn't matter what it is that you're saying, because it's whatever it is that you're saying to yourself, that's preventing you from that, that step forward. So, um, so when you're working with your clients, like how many clients typically are you working with? So it, it definitely varies. I did a uh, free boot camp. This was three weeks ago, I believe it was. It was called Young, Confident, and Paid. I had 166 women sign up for it. Um, and it was a four-day boot camp in my Facebook group. And um, it came with a workbook. And every day of the four days, I went live, gave a lesson within that workbook, and had them apply it to themselves and their business, whether they already started a business or they were thinking about the business and uh, introducing the power of collaboration because without collaboration I would not be here like at all not even a little bit like collaboration grows your business period <laughs> <laughs> period um so when it comes to things like that there is no cap but however when I offer my paid programs I typically talk not to work with more than eight women at a time so that I can I can expand myself and give them as much as me as as I can. I don't ever want to be overwhelmed. I want to be able to see better pour onto, you know, the first client as much as I can the last. Um, So being able to do that, it definitely has saved me a headache. (laughs) (laughs) And it, and it definitely would, because like, you're trying to make sure that you're doing all of those, uh, those things all at once. And so that's, uh, so that's incredible that you're able to do and, um, and that eight is that infinity symbol, right? So yeah. like, I don't know if that's where you got that from, like, if that's why you chose the number eight, but it's that infinity, right? So like, if we're actually working with the energies, it's like that, that um, kind of going back and forth. And, um, and it is about that collaboration, right? So that's really, really important that we actually work at collaborating. And that's one of the things that I've said, because I don't do business. That's not what it is that I do. But I often hear different women that say, well, I can't move forward, right? So like I'm working with them on life and wellness. 
and they're like, but I can't move forward. I'm stuck. I can't go and, and do that business. I want to, I want to be able to get out of this job or I want to be able to get out of that. And so being able to host the Monday Whispers chat is about being able to bring people like you or people who um, have different experiences. Um, like I said, we had a couple of a few weeks ago that we had somebody that said, um, I saw the the ad that said, do you want to sign up for Monday Whispers chat? And she said, like, and I jumped on it before I even thought about it, because if I thought about it, then I wasn't going to do it. And but I don't have a business, she said. And I'm like, well, that doesn't matter. Like Monday Whispers chat isn't about businesses necessarily. It is if that's where people are at, but that's not where everybody's at. And so one of the things that was really interesting is her jumping forward and stepping forward is that I got a message from someone else who's been like on that fence of, okay, well, I really want to be able to get my business going and, um, and, but I'm waiting for that, that perfect step. I'm waiting for all those things to be done. I'm waiting for all these things. And so I'm just going to continue to work at my job and I'm not going to move forward. And I got this message that said, you know, when she was on, that's all that it took was for me to be able to hear from her. I just need to step forward. We've had other people that have come on that have shared. And I know this person watches every one of my videos because she's already told me. So every one of my, uh, every one of my Monday whispers chats, she watches them. So I'm, I'm really um, thrilled that she does that. And, but like I've had other people that have actually talked about that in a similar way, but this message came from, it was her download. That was her her link of what it is that she needed to be able to hear. And so, um, so when somebody's listening today or when somebody was listening last week, there is a message that is there that one of the people have said that resonates, right? So like I said, we had 11 different speakers, 11 different speakers said similarly the same things. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes, a lot of us were when I know that when I went up, because I went up on the Sunday, and by the time that I went up, it was like, okay, my presentation is completely switched around because so-and-so talked about this and so-and-so talked about that and so-and-so talked about this and I'm not going to talk about the same thing. So I went into a different spin yeah. um, as in terms of the, the messages, but the messages were still all very similar. And it was like, oh yeah. And somebody was saying yesterday and somebody was saying, right. So those messages keep coming forward of being able to take those steps. And when we don't take those steps, it makes a huge difference in terms of um, how we're going to uh, move forward. So my background's mental health and addictions. And so oftentimes I'll have people say, yeah, but my life really sucked. Yeah, it did. And I agree. But so did this person's and so yeah. did that person's and like, and that was when I, when I read your introduction, when you first applied and I went through and, um, and you booked in, I should say, cause you guys don't apply. You guys actually just book in and, um, because I don't choose which topic you guys are going to say or whatever it is. That's so like, unless somebody actually comes up with anything offensive, then I haven't turned anybody away yeah. um, because it's your topic. It's about you and whatever it is that you're bringing to whoever it is that is going to listen. And so when I read yours, I'm like, wow, <laughs> this is incredible, right? It's like, so here's a prime example of somebody who had a, a rough time, who had difficulty being able to kind of move forward and took that. And instead of going like, oh, poor me, and I'm never going to get anywhere, you were doing braids in your bedroom. <laughs> right? yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's all a perception, you know, yeah. as above is below, like, that that infinity sign yeah. and being able to say to yourself like do I want to really be this person forever or do I want to change you know do I want to live the same cycle that my mom and my grandmom and everyone else lived or do I want to break that cycle and become more for the people who not only myself but people who are around me and for my children you know like at some point someone has to say this is not the way life is supposed to be. Like yeah. when you really realize that you have the power to change everything around you and the only excuse there is in the world or only thing stopping you is yourself, then yeah. you look at life differently. And, and you're so right. So it's just that being able to like, what are you doing to stop yourself, right? So how many times has somebody else told you what it is that you should and you shouldn't be doing. And that's, I think, one of the other things that happens with, especially women. And um, so where we're from, a lot of um, 
for like where we're from, it's more um, in the States, you guys, them call, you call them uh, Native Americans, whereas we call them Aboriginals. And so like from our, our Aboriginal Native people here, that is one of the things that I often hear is that because they are our minority, they, um, they great, have great value, but it's like, well, who's going to listen to me? And I know that in the States for you, it's, um, it's about being the, um, and I, I don't want to offend, so I don't know what word that I'm supposed to use, but right. So being a woman of color, that makes a difference, right? So, um, and it's just making sure that, um, that it doesn't matter where we are, right? So it doesn't matter what race that we are. It doesn't matter where we, we, where we stand, but as women, if we can actually stand and empower each other, it mm-hmm. makes all the difference in the world. And we can, um, so like, I don't look at color. I don't look at race. I am what's called a hidden um, privilege because I, um, I'm a Métis background, but I have, um, but I'm white colored, right? So like we have that, that, um, that facade of, so I can still use my, um, I can still use my traditions and still learn the things that I'm doing. But when somebody looks at me, I come from um, an appearance of privilege, whereas some of my sisters don't come from that same privilege and they have that, um, that barrier that's behind them and that they've lived on the reserves or, um, or they've lived in different communities where um, it's not the best communities to be living in. And um, they've lived in that extra poverty, but just because, we're coming from those places. I've seen huge, huge um, people and like you're a prime example, right? So like, I don't know what you came from in terms of like, I know that you talked about being a teen mom, but I don't know what, what conditions that you came from, but it's like, like you said, like I was braiding in my bedroom and I overcame being a single mom of three at the end, at the age of 22 to be able to um, do all these different entrepreneurs. I've, I've done the jobs and my, and my business. And you've got those different things and where, where there's a will, there's a way. And it's being able to like find that strength within you to be able to step forward and say, where are we going? Yeah. Where are we going? What are we definitely, doing? Definitely. And, and recognizing firsthand, like, Hey, I, I may not have, like you said, those, those outer appearance privileges that are just handed to me, but that's not going to stop me from having a, a, not only a dream, but a goal in mind and, and actually achieving it. You know, um, my, my dad is always like, if you can't get in the front door, kick in the back door, you know, like make your life (laughs) open the window and get in, but either way, whatever you got to do, you make sure you get in there, a seat at the table. And now we're at the point where it's like, okay, I can have a seat at the table or I can make my own and bring my own. Like I am the table at this point, you know? So it's like all about having that perception and realizing that, okay, I don't have to accept it in anybody else's group or what they think of me. I can create my own at this point. And that's, that's definitely a reality that I always have to look at and, and see that. Um, I know I talk about a lot women uplifting women and if we don't have each other, like who has us, you know, yeah. we are, we are all that we got. And when we have that realization that I can make it by holding my sister's hand and reaching down and coming back for each other, then this world is going to be so much greater than what it is right now. And, um, and that's one of the things is that we had, um, grandmothers sharing their teachings this, um, this weekend about, um, about being able to hold each other and as sisters that we have that, that connection and, and it doesn't matter. It's that, that, um, feminine energy that we have that we actually get to create and we can create anything that we want and the more and I love the messages that your dad's that your dad's given you right like if you can't get in the one way then find another way in there's always a way in and and then I even like your analogy even better it's like build my own right I don't need their table I can just take my own table I'll just set up my own table and whoever wants to come join me can come and hang out right exactly Um, and that's one of the things that like is so important of being able to do this and stepping forward. And so same as like with our, um, 
our conference this weekend. We didn't get, we were hoping to be able to get our maximum number of women was 75 women. And we had 37 registered instead of the 75. And it's like, we're moving forward. We're moving forward anyway. And next year we'll have 60 women or 75. We're not going more than 75 because we want to be able to keep the container in, in terms of, um, of being able to have that, those interactions. Whereas if it gets bigger, then you don't have those same interactions and we want that. So, but it's, um, that's incredible when, and, and like I said, it's just so, um, the energy that filled that room with those 33 women was incredible. And, um, and at, at some points throughout the weekend is that there wasn't a dry eye in the house. There was somebody that was like, finding the Kleenex. We actually, we didn't even think about Kleenex. I don't know why I didn't think about Kleenex, but <laughs> I didn't think about Kleenex. And so it was, um, they had to go and find a box of Kleenex. So that's on my list for next year to make sure that we have boxes of Kleenex. <laughs> yes. and, and, um, and I should have known cause I'm, I very emotional. And so, um, but I didn't think of it. <laughs> it was like, no, no, their topic is going to be about balance. It's going to be balance and uplifting. And, and it was uplifting, but at the same time, it was like those, those periods of feeling where it is that we were actually coming from. So, um, so Penny says like so much positive energy this weekend um, was the best place to be and, uh, and to feel this. So, and it was, it was incredible to be able to have that. And it was each other lifting each other up. And there was a couple of times when um, some of the women were having more difficulty. And as a facilitator, it was nice to be able to see where the others were going and, lifting each other up and, um, and supporting them and putting their arms around them and helping them get through those few minutes or those, um, uh, those half hours or whatever it was that it was for them to be able to kind of get them through that period. And it's incredible when you see all these women come together to support each other. And yes. um, so it's so beautiful. That sounds amazing. It really does. It sounds so you beautiful. You should come next year. <laughs> come next year. Yes, definitely. So it's um, it we I do it. This is my third, my second year. So we've got this the third year set up, and it's um. Um, so it'll be the third annual women inspiring women. And so the themes are different depending on what the themes are. Last year was loving yourself enough to dot, dot, dot. And the speakers talked about what it was about to love themselves enough to do. So some of it was, some of them was to, um, end relationships. Some of them was that the relationships had already ended and they had to move on, or some of them had, um, had experienced, um, had experienced violence in some form. And so like, and they shared their stories and, but it wasn't about like what happened to them. Like that was part of their story, but the rest of the story was about how did they pull themselves up and bring themselves forward and, and be able to do these things. And um, so last year's theme was like, it was, it was incredible as well. And then this year was supposed to be about balance, but it was all about how to be able to connect with yourself and your spirit yeah. and your um, because that is how you actually are able to create balance. And like exactly. I said, everybody was like, and because again, I do the same thing in terms of the speakers. It's like, I throw out the theme. Um, and then they tell me like, okay, this is what I'm going to talk about. And then, so fix up, fix them up on the agenda. And so like, same as when people do the Monday whispers chat, it's like, how are we doing this? And it's just that free flowing conversation of mind you, the presentations aren't free flowing necessarily, but the um for some that it is but not for everybody and but it's at being able to have those conversations and so like i said we booked the venue this morning i woke up booked the venue have the date set know exactly when we're doing this and so it's we're doing another international women's day um weekend and so it's i don't know what the theme is yet but we're moving forward for doing this oh, again so definitely keep me updated i would love 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 <laughs> Um, and if you need any panels, let me know. I would love to be a panelist as well. So, so just keep me up in the loop. <laughs> so it's uh, it, like, it's, it's incredible when we see that energy that comes from the women. And so, and like, and we had, um, we had elders that were there. So we, we refer to them as our grandmothers. And so the grandmothers were there and they shared um, their teachings and they shared their energy and they were in the room to be able to, um, um, to be there and support us. And then the next, um, and then, but at, one of the things that I, I really needed to acknowledge is that we had two um, young girls that actually were there. Um, our photographer is still in high school 
And so, um, so she came and she became our photographer and she was there for the entire weekend. And then we had another young girl who has just turned 18. And so it was like being able to have those huge spectrums of, um, of these elder women to these young girls. And then we had a whole bunch in between, right? So we had one mom that was there or one, uh, one mom that was there that was pregnant. We had, and then we had others that were um, biologically grandmothers. And so it was just really cool to be able to see that um, huge dynamic. Some of them were entrepreneurs. Some of them were um, people that were working. Some of them were um, women that were retired. And so um, marketing to that is a little challenging. <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah. it's about women coming together and, and um, empowering each other and so that's um and that is like like you said it's that being able to get out of your way and being able to take those steps forward and so that's really incredible that uh that you you've done this for however many years like you said two years that you've been doing this part and 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 reshifting and rebranding and changing everything up and for those who are not entrepreneurs or like rebranding what do you mean rebranding <laughs> so, um do you want to explain maybe for those who are not entrepreneurs that are watching absolutely so when you are in your business um or even in life period you have these life shifts and when it comes to business, it's the same exact thing. So as you are leveling up in your business or in your life, um, you also want to constantly do research and make sure you're serving your audience the proper way. So um, when I said I first started my business, I announced myself as a success coach who served everybody who owned a business. I don't care if it was a brick and mortar or an online business. If you had one and I thought about starting one, I was your girl for you. And because of that, I made zero dollars. <laughs> and when I was able to narrow my niche a little bit, you know, more and say, okay, I'm going to do just service-based businesses and stick with that. I was able to make, you know, a little more cash flow started coming in because I actually narrowed my niche. And that was me rebranding from you know, not really knowing um, where I wanted to be and evolving into this is so much better. I can serve an actual audience with this. And when it came with that, I had, you know, changed my colors, my themes of who I attract. Um, and also my website, you know, we're constantly updating it to make sure that it speaks to who I feel it should speak to. So um, with me rebranding for the third time, it is a specifically for women who are working their nine to fives and want to, and also, you know, have either thought about having a service-based business or is currently have one on the side and want to go full time. So um, versus at the beginning, again, I was for everybody to only service-based business to now being specifically for women who are working nine to five and want to transition into their full time, which is a niche of its own. And <laughs> I thought that not so many people who are, who are doing that, you know, they like want people who are just starting or um, not really sure. And if, if there's so many lead magnets out there, it drives me crazy, like bananas. I just cannot. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so that's, that's what I'm niching towards now. That's what I'm, what I'm rebranding towards now. And it feels good because I knew I was aligned when instant gratification started coming yeah. and that didn't come until after I got to that, that niche, you know? So yeah, that's exactly what branding and rebranding is. It's that constant evolution of yourself and your business. And that's one of the things is that I'm constantly feeling like I'm saying, oh, okay, well, here's a new change. I'm changing something new because as my, my as my group evolves, as my, as my, um, my clients evolve, as I evolve, things are shifting all the time. So like now I had, um, I had somebody who rebranded my entire website and helped me create um, new colors and themes and all using my feather. And, um, and so then things kind of shifted and I'm like, oh, okay, I'm really liking this. And then now it's not doing the things that I need it. Like the website itself is not doing the platform, isn't doing the things that I need. And so it's like, okay, so reshift again. So, oh, by the way, things are 
are changing. <laughs> I'm going yeah. to a new platform. And so I'm switching over to WordPress. And so I, that kind of scares me a little because I don't know anything about it. At least um, Wix, I could like click and drop and I can still do stuff for the most part, but it's not doing the things that I need it to do. So um, so now we're shifting over. And um, so those are the, uh, so, but it's all those changes all the time, right? So things change, things shift. Um, I grow, they grow, we, we shift back, we do the different things that we need to. It's like that dance, right? It's that evolution dance. Exactly. Um, able to, um, to shift back and forth. So exactly. And you I want not, that. You, <laughs> and I really want that. you don't want to be in the same spot next year where you are today. Yeah. And I, uh, and I like the shifts and I like the changes and I do like some things that are to stay the same. Um, like I like being able to, like I said, this is the second conference that I've done. My, in my intention again is to be able to do that again, because I love being able to have that, um, that ability or that opportunity to collaborate with other women, to be able to help empower other women. So that is something that unless somebody comes back and says, okay, you're done. You're not doing this anymore. I think that that's something that I'm going to continue. And it happens in other communities. Um, but like, we're, like I said, we're up North in Northeastern Ontario. And so a lot of things happen, um, six or eight hour drive, um, from us all the time. And it's so it's like, what about us? Let's do something that we can actually do to empower ourselves and do that here in our community. So really excited to be able to do that. And then the, the other thing that is my, um, my thing that I'm not switching that I'm keeping is that I also have a, um, a women's retreat that I do, um, that we take, we rent a cabin. There's a specific cabin that I rent. Um, and we have, uh, we all bunk together in the same building in the same chalet. We eat together, we cook together, we clean together, and we spend the weekend together as we actually connect within ourselves. The themes are different depending on what it is. And like that's this um, fall is going to be my third annual and I go into this particular space. And so like I was going to different spaces and it's like, no, this is my space. This is where I'm going. Um, the theme changes a little bit, but in terms of like what it is that we're doing in terms of connecting with ourselves is... Uh, is um as being able to help us with that uh, with that growth and and that is where i've seen huge shifts with some of my clients and then that's when some of my programs shift and change is that because as they grow i grow and so um so as a coach and i'm sure that you can attest to that is as a coach you always grow with your clients right so as your clients are growing you're growing and you're expanding and with each um with each of their successes is part of our successes so exactly i say that i say that all the time like when you win i win that's yeah. it that's all. hi teach t says change is leveling up growth i love it yes <laughs> <laughs> That is like, it's incredible to be able to see how we, uh, how we shift and, and things just, um, it's like evolution, right? Is evolution happening right there, right then when we stay out of our way, right? When we, and I love that statement. And I know that it's, it's said in a number of different um, contexts and, but I love that statement, get out of your way so that you can grow and shift and change. And so I don't know if you can see my sign behind me. It's, um, I think it's actually kind of a little bit low. So it says, um, if the plan doesn't work, change the plan, but never the goal. Yeah, right? so I love that. That is my favorite thing. And so, and those were some of the things that I would be doing with my clients is that because I do a lot of trauma work. And so it's like, but if you can't, so if your goal is to be able to get here, there's a different way of being able to get there. And whether it's with me or with someone else, that part there doesn't matter. Um, it's so long as you're actually getting to be able to do it and being able to shift and, um, and get yourself in that, that, um, get yourself out of that. Right. So get yourself out of that and move forward. And so I love it. It's, uh, it's incredible. So now, is there anything else that, um, you wanted to make sure that we talked, we touched on before we, um, we head out? Um, I would just say if you are looking to transition from your job and you have a service-based business, I am the girl for you. Reach out. Um, my name on Facebook, both my fan page and personal page is my first and last name, Kaisha Williams, K-Y-E-S-H-A. Um, is it showing? Yeah, it does show in here. Good. And um, you can also reach me at kaishawilliams.com. If you have any questions, if you want to join my email list, I have a self-love letter that goes out every Sunday and it speaks to your soul. Do you hear me? <laughs> 
I talk about my real life and um, what's happening in within my weeks and how to overcome things that are common to a lot of us. And um, I offer self-love tips and how to care for yourself that week. I talk about the moon and energy and just a lot of things that I'm really into. So if you're into that stuff too and love to offer or love to receive, uh, you know, business advice, definitely reach out to me. Um, in my Facebook group, every first Tuesday of the month, we go live and do a free coaching. And that's in a... Um, my free group. Um, so definitely, if you're interested in that, reach out to that, reach out to me and I'll send you the link. And yeah, it's, it's all, it's all good. Listen, if you, if there's anything that you want to do in this life, there's nothing stopping you. Literally, it's all in your head. And once you can overcome that, just push forward and you're going to be tested, but that's just the way of the world. Once you overcome that, it, it just, it would just flow. Things would just flow. And it does. And like you said, like that is, um, it's incredible how much that happens. So if you can maybe put the links in the comments and um, so that people, I know that I've got some links in there. I've got your website link. I've got your Facebook page, I think. Yeah. So your Facebook page, your, um, your Instagram and your website, but like any of the other links that um, you want to make sure that they have access to then. Um, so whether you're, um, um, email list or whatever. I guess that's probably on your website, eh? Yes. So, um, and so Penny says, well, you're actually adding those. Penny says, um, the, o- the only thing that we can change, uh, the only thing that can change a goal is in the time frame. So, and it's just, yes. and, and it's, but being able to break it, things up into those small steps, right? So like you talked Absolutely. about the four things, like taking those steps and starting with those four steps to be able to move you forward is, uh, is definitely where things are. So. Yay. Yay. So thank you so much for doing this. I love your energy. It was exciting to be able to have these conversations with you. And like I said, in terms of alignment, it's like, wow. It's perfect. <laughs> it's the universe like, is a lie. The universe always tells the truth. It does. <laughs> and uh, and some days we don't want to face the truth, but it's there and whether we like it or not. Right. So, um, so like there's always things happen for a reason, don't know what they are sometimes and doesn't always make sense, but it does eventually. So, Mm -hmm. so thank you so much for doing that and, uh, and being part of, uh, of Monday was first chat and, uh, really look forward to having more, more connection with you. Yes, definitely. Definitely. I will be at your next, um, your next event next year. So don't (laughs) don't worry about it. We're going to (laughs) connect. That's awesome. (laughs) But thanks for having me. Bye, everyone. I will see you guys next.